How are you? Good. So. Do you think it's okay to take a video? Oh, I'm I'm videotaping it, but but you can you can you can film. You want to just film Arthur? Or? I can you? take I can videotape. You're gonna Everybody, you're gonna take the whole thing. And I can upload it to the. Uh, here you, here you, uh, do you know that we created? I created the. Here you, here you opera. Ah. Careful of the power cable. <laughs>
Bach Festival, really, of course, was the found yeah, author. He's a yeah. musical director of that, that one festival. Anyway, enjoying a career all over the world, uh, including all over Europe and, and so forth. We're so delighted to have him. So please help me welcome Thomas Cooley. <laughs> You're up first, right? Yes, I am. Let's just get started. Okay. Oh, we are able to take these off now, right? Yeah. When you sing, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's. I mean, yeah, it's. It's optional, but of course, yeah. I guess I should say a word about that. You know, of course, we want to respect everyone's comfort level, and I know not everyone's. I know people have good reason for wearing masks. So if you're wearing a mask, it's totally fine with me, and I and I'm gonna put mine on because I'm just sitting here watching, but. Uh, but yes, please sing it out. Yeah. Good evening. Today I'll be performing Nel Profondo Che Como by Vivaldi's Orlando Furioso. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's like a pep talk for yourself, right? Yeah. You're like, you're like, wait, I'm a hero. She should love me. I know I can do this. So, and I would like, like maybe just a little bit more. I love your energy, but maybe we can just use a little bit more, like your, just your body stance, and just to, to try and take a really strong thing, not quite lose so much. And let's let's just work through it a little bit, and um, and I'll just stop you here then. Okay. Thank you. 
especially this one for me, mm -hmm. especially in this first time through, you're giving yourself a pep talk. Mm -hmm. What emotion do you think is causing that big color tour to happen? It's like the, I think it's more of the anxiety of him being like, it's like his brain being like, no, but like, look at her with this other guy. Right? Like, she's just, and so it's like that internal, the first part's more calmer. He's like, you got this. You mm -hmm. got, just got to walk over there. And then the color tour is him like kind of seeing them together and being like, ugh. For me, this for me this thing that, 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 that's all that's all valid. That's great, and I think that is absolutely the point of this entire aria. Um, but when you have this, it's it goes into this major place for me, and so I think it is a moment where you're like, it's going to be okay. So I, I would like to see you sort of enjoy it more and see it maybe with a bit more joy, actually in that moment as a color. So the overarching thing is what you were talking about, but I think if we can find these small colors within these arias, we have all of these reiterations of this text in every Baroque aria. You have, sometimes you've got four words to sing for an entire page of music, and we have to use all of our, uh, all of the colors in our paint box to make that music live. And so things you can use are the diction, you can use the grammar, you can use your vocal color, you can use your facial expression, change of affect, those kind of things. So if we can just try to, can you just try that for me and just just uh, start at the And then all then those ah, 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 that's like so exciting. I got goosebumps when you did that because it was intensifying. You were doing exactly what I was, was asking for. It's really great, really great. Um, can we do it one more time and go on? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Stars like if you, have you ever seen the movie Farinelli? Clips of it. Clips of it. So you've got these people in these like wild baroque headdresses and like skirts out to here. You've got the guys even mm -hmm. in skirts out to here, and so it would have been you know maybe a castrato. And these people were just such performers, and I loved. You had that little moment of like, oh, I forgot this, <laughs> and it was really great. And so I play around with those colors, and what I also like very much. When you do this repeated, ah, 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 I see the emotionalized breath that you're taking, and you can use that throughout this entire aria. Every time you're taking a breath, you can go, this one would be mad. This one would be happy. This one would be air. You know, and it's but it's so much about starting, even starting your the intention in your in your mind and your soul, but using your breath to realize that. Just like when we speak. If I'm, gonna get, if I'm getting ready to talk to you and I'm going to yell at you, I go, <gasps> you know, and if I'm just don't know what to do, and it's so much about how you really inspire and you take your breath in, that will help inspire us as we listen to you. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. really <laughs>
name is Arthur Keats, and I will be singing Batachito Nascosto uh, from Handel's Giulio Cellulo. <laughs> Start in a bit of a quieter place. It's such it's so it's so seductive because it's with horns, full orchestra. But if you start this, and especially when you start 
the recapitulation. But at the beginning, I just wanted to be very, like, if you were talking to somebody and you were like, I'm going to teach this guy a lesson, he would start going, Bleh! he'd be like, okay, 20 seconds. So can you go from that place first? Yeah. I 
I want to hear a little bit more of the gospel in that too. Can we try that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
Understood. yourself that it's 
it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And so I think the beginning of this just has to have that calmness. And I think that's very much what Copeland is trying to, to capture here. Can you give a little bit more space to the vowel on hot? Can you build forget him? Just a little bit taller vowel for me. Okay. <laughs> Tonight. So again, give yourself the space already to grow into. It's a little bit too tonight. And I'll say tonight. So we have a real crescendo, day crescendo, but the day crescendo just kind of happens as you taper up to that B. Okay. You just before you and I, yeah. Great. I know I give you things, other things to think about. So it's a lot of information always to, to process. And I'd love already on you and I, you have a nice tall vowel there. Don't lose that space when you go down to the tonight. Tonight. Same place. Not a, not a loud one, just a nice tight. One more time. Now this is a new idea, right? You may forget the warmth he gave, and so I need a warmer sound from you. So right away on that, you may forget. Really sing through that. So much better. Now I'm just gonna I'm being picky. You may forget. Can you give me that nice tall et again? The warmth he gave. Go ahead and give yourself space. Thank you. 
that's so good. I, I, like when you got up to that E, it's like so shimmery and beautiful because you gave it space. It was really lovely. Um, so then I think here it says moving forward. So I think when you get to the when you have done, I think you can really just push. Don't listen to the piano. Just go. When you have done, or when you have done, I don't know. It's in the songwriter. Great. <laughs> So it's when I have texts like this, I always think it's like singing is spelling. And I want everybody to hear every single consonant, vowel, and I want it all to come across just so that everybody goes, oh, wow, that's a great poem. OK? Excellent. Thank you so much. My name is Ray Hira, and I will be singing Riva Song from Giorgio Cervi's Wine Book. Thank you. 
And so she's she's absolutely devastated, but she also can't sort of have the like weeping and wailing aria. So this is it's a, this very introverted, such a special aria. And you you see with really beautiful color. Let's just let's just work a little bit on the on the uh, expression even more. Can I get more? Really lamenting, but also noble. So it's really just like it's that moment of shock. You're just like. The, the, the aria kind of comes out of nowhere. Because it does come out of nowhere, right? It just starts. <laughs> There's no introduction, it just is. So plenty of resonance, but not a lot of volume. <laughs> Just checking, just checking. <laughs> so when when you can, it, it's a really helpful thing. But but even if you can't really do it. If you can just hear more of the D. Conforto, the, the N and the F actually make an M. So it's conforto. Comfort, like we say comfort, and it comes really from that same Latin thing that people that the, 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 the I always forget what it's called when they do this, but the the N and the F actually become the conforto, conforto. Comfort. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
so beautiful. Your songs were just perfect. That was great. Um, and then, um, and then I know I did it very straight. I'm not asking you to sing it straight, but I want I want that kind of a thing where the energy just doesn't let go until we get to the and then you can let that go. And then when you get to the no, no, take more time. Again, that's like no, no, you really need on that last part. Okay? You can do all of those things I just said. Yeah, so the words are too Lovely, and because I think you can, I also, again, with this emotionalized breath that I talked about earlier, that's a perfect place that and every conductor, pianist, they will be able to follow you because they heard your breath it was going. One more time. Say usually, I quote Lawrence Cummings, and at some point I said, Sometimes don't you think less is more with ornamentation? And he said, More is more. <laughs> <laughs> and the more that I do, the more I kind of go, You know what? And he, he really, in the in the Lacapos, when I would sing with him, he wouldn't let you do any phrase not ornamented. <laughs> In the in the Lacapo. He had to come up with something. And he never forced anything on me, but he just he just was like, don't you know, come up with something different then. You can't repeat what you did before. And it's it's a really good exercise. And again, like in this, you could do it. Really simple little bit, but always in this character too, elegant. Always try and find the noble, elegant, especially in this in this aria. Just you've you've got your game face on, but you're just destroyed inside. And the sound is just beautiful. It's really really lovely. Um, and again, that you have those wonderful rests that he wrote in the. Hey, 
So use those again to just make us go a few lines. Really great. Now, for a completely different kind of <laughs> Hello, my name is Hugh Davis, and Shelby and I will be performing Sidi Lara di Angri D'Amento from Handel's Renaldo. Oh, <laughs> 
Some some colors. So again, just go back to that. Like, hey man, I'm cool. You know, we just want to talk, right? So the first one comes out, and you're like, oh, maybe that's a bit much. So the second time, you're like, see the dialecto, and maybe use the language itself and just. So the first one, what do you think the most important word is in that first phrase? Um, I think the what well, it's it's not it's. Kissing, isn't it? I think it's yeah. I think I think it's I, and, I do, and I do think in, in terms of expression mm -hmm. that getting that si vida, young vida, let go. Mm -hmm. And then the second time you go, si vida, young vida, let go. And we really go, oh, her. Okay, okay. So you've gotten kissing and you've gotten electo, and people who were in the know about mythology will go, oh, that's what this phrase is. Okay. <laughs> Too tight in the lower jaw. Like, 
I, I, so, on me! Let, let the really release the jaw. Can you just put your finger like that? And just, just, just do that, the high phrase there. On me! On me, on you, need on me! Do you feel all your jaws? On me! On me! Like, really, don't worry so much about the words, I just want to get it into that spot. Gotcha. Now do it. Don't do that though. Don't keep your head up. Yes. Okay. Think about that when you're practicing this and just. Just because what it's going to do is it's going to let your voice be in an optimal place, and so you're not having to reach for those notes. Yeah, it's a hard Because it is, I mean, you've done a lot already, so you want it to just kind of happen, yeah. right? Yeah. Optimally. Yeah, but it's really, it's, it's, it's so good and so exciting, and yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Tom? Yes. How did you get into baroque? Um, into baroque music. I, you know, I, I came from the choir tradition, and I grew up in Minnesota, and I did my master's in at the University of Minnesota, and there was a baroque opera company there, a little shoestring thing called Ex Machina Baroque Opera, and the same year that I auditioned and got a part with them, and they would do these incredible performances where literally everything was cardboard cutouts, glue, glitter, I had costumes stapled together, it was, it was, it was really on a shoestring. But they would do fully staged in with Baroque gesture, these Baroque operas. And so the first thing I actually got to do was Alcina. And that same year, Mark Morris Dance Group came to Minnesota, and I was singing in the Minnesota Chorale, and they did their incredible La Negro, mm -hmm. which is their absolute, his magnum opus as far as his, his choreography is concerned. Just such a beautiful piece. And um, it was, I mean, I, I had a studied keyboard, and I liked, I was enjoyed Baroque music, but that was the first time that I was like, I know there was like all this, this treasure of vocal music, and so it was always something that I wanted to do. I just fell in love with it from that moment. And so I was always bringing these arias to my teachers, and back then, nobody was singing handle arias. And, but I bring it in, and they'd be like, well, it might be useful for an audition or something, or, you know, warm-ups for your recital. And, because uh, that, was, that was kind of the, the thought about it back then. And, you know, here we were doing these fully staged, these, these and I was just like, no, this is, like, this is such great music, and it's so, psychological and so deep and um and i just love learning to let go and ornament and all of those things and so it was just something that i continued but i never you know i didn't get a degree in early music in order to do this i wanted i wanted to go and sing opera and do my concerts and things like that and you know so my first job at, at a theater was really doing much, much more mozart but it was great because i had a conductor there who wanted something with an early music sensibility and this was in Germany, I moved to Germany, that was the other thing that I then found a little bit after I found Handel, was Bach. And I was seeing in the choir of the Oregon Bach Festival, and seeing these incredible soloists come through, and doing the, the Passions and the B minor Mass, and just this incredible music, and all with modern instruments, of course, that was, there was, nobody was doing anything period in the States at all. And, um, it just really instilled a love of, of that music. And so when I went, when I, I moved to Germany, I, I really was like, I want to sing the evangelist. I just started working on that and studying it. And thankfully, my husband is also an evangelist because I'm married to another tenor. And, and he was one of the best evangelists that there were. So he was a very good coach in that. And uh, yeah, and it's just been something that's, that's stayed with me forever. But it's not the only thing I sing either. I sing Beethoven and Elgar and Britain and all of those things. So, yeah. Um, when I'm singing different like eras and genres, it's really hard for me to be able to like 
switch back into the different technique that I need for that time period. So how do you compartmentalize that and rehearse when you've got multiple genres that or eras that you have to work on at one time? So I I have always tried to approach Baroque music by not making big vocal changes. So I just sing with my voice. And to me, it's much more about regulating colors and and actually modifying my vibrato. I don't I do sing straight sometimes, but I'm not one of these people who's, you know, wants really music singers to only get singing straight. I think those days are kind of just gone now anyway. So I think just keeping a tone from which you could grow into any messy voce on any note is great. And that can be a straight sound too. You can start straight and then let it go, like we heard in the Prima Song so beautifully. Really gorgeous. And so it's, and to me, that's really the only difference between singing maybe, you know, Mozart, Mozart. Also, you can use those same colors for Mozart. If you're doing, if you're doing wild contemporary music, that's a little bit different thing that it requires some extended vocal technique. But I think in general, you should just try to espouse in any kind of repertoire, kind of your same basic sound and then just realize I need to add a little bit of this or a dash of that, and that will make it stylish. So don't think of it so much as changing your technique, but just changing your style. Okay. Wonderful singer, thank you so much. Let's all thank Thomas Cooley for being here. Yeah. And please thank Shelby Rose for joining us. Travel safely. Thank you. Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, yeah,